A lovely morning to you and thank you so much for being with us on UBC TV. Welcome to Good Morning Uganda Agenda. I'm Robert Chirabon, in case you have just joined, but we are always here from 6.30. And uh, this morning, I'm having a team of ladies. It's very rare for me to have three ladies. Now, this morning, I have three ladies on set, and that explains that the women. So if you're there, you're a lady, you're in the cooperative movement, you want, you're an entrepreneur there, well, to is economic empowerment of women through cooperatives. Economic empowerment of women through cooperatives. Now, we want to understand how can we empower the women in our community, many of whom these days at least have a business, one or two, and uh, sometimes growth of this business remains a challenge. Statistics have shown that many businesses of women stagnate at a certain level. If she has been maybe have dealing in charcoal, she will stagnate at three bags. Year in, year out, the three bags are over, she will bring more. So how do we see these businesses improve? Now, joining me on set, I have uh, Kahinza Justin, who represents the head of partnerships, Uganda Cooperative Alliance. You're most welcome. Thank you, Mr. Shirabo. And uh, just next to her, I have Oroma Emanuela, who is uh, the board vice chair, Uganda Cooperative Alliance. You're most welcome, Emanuela. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And then at the extreme end, I have uh, Connie Key. Koni Kehi Mbo, I hope I did it well, I did justice to that name, uh, who is uh, the Chief Executive Officer, Uganda Women Entrepreneurs Association Limited. You're most welcome. Thank you. Good morning, viewers. Now, let me begin with uh, Kainza. First and foremost, for someone who could have watched cooperatives for the first time this show and maybe doesn't understand very well uh, when we talk about cooperatives. A brief definition of what are cooperatives. Thank you, Mr. Shirabo, and good morning to our viewers. Uh, I'm so grateful. We are grateful to UBC for availing this platform to promote development through cooperatives using the cooperative model. A cooperative is an association of persons who are united voluntarily to meet their social, economic aspirations through a jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprise. And uh, as cooperators globally, we have principles we operate. I will be brief on the principles. There are seven globally, just like the Ten Commandments in the Bible, for us to have our seven principles. One is open and voluntary membership. Secondly, uh, we have democratic governance. People are free to elect their leaders. One, one person, one vote in cooperatives. W thirdly, we have member economic participation. We have independence and autonomy. We have uh, education, training, and learning in cooperatives. Then we uh, cooperation among cooperatives. Yes, we relate with each other. Cooperation among cooperatives and concern for community. So our viewers out there, this morning we are coming in basing on the third principle of member economic participation. And we've uh, seen that as women, Uganda Cooperative Alliance carried out a capacity needs assessment. And we established the findings of that research showed that the participation of women is still below average. We, we are not yet, the, the women participation in cooperatives not scaled up. And yet, one of our key pillars is women and youth. So that is why the board members, Madame Moroma is here, came up and uh, devised strategies. And one of the strategies is to reach out to the women through the sensitization, the scaled up sensitization. So we are so grateful to UBC for availing us this platform for women to come and share their experiences in cooperatives. I'm a cooperator, I'm a member of the Uganda Parliamentary Circle, and also happen to be a board member, and we are coming here to share. And apart from that, I've been privileged to serve Bududa community as a member of parliament. I have seen how women have benefited from the, okay, at times have the village savings and, mm. you know, the association, organizations, and also cooperatives. So we are coming to share our testimonies across board. We are coming to encourage the women who are out there that this model of development First of all, the constitution is clear. It, it empowers women. I mean, uh, you read Article 33. It says 
it's about the rights of women. And the subsection talks about the government availing a conducive platform for women to participate, uh, to, have to, to gain economic independence. So these are some of the ways we, we are grateful to government. Of course, we have seen programs. We had the Women Entrepreneurship Fund, the Youth Fund. Now we have Grow Project. We are here with uh, Madame will tell us about uh, you know, the, the product they have. So we are grateful and we, we are calling upon women out there, Ugandans out there, who, uh, people watching all over the globe, that cooperatives a good model for women empowerment and we should tap into it. Mm. Mm. Now, uh, cooperatives are a good model for women and women should tap into it. Mm. Let me just go straight to Emanuela. Uh, mobilizing women, one would say they are very entrepreneurial, but what has been your experience like uh, to bring them into the cooperative movement? How hard, how easy has it been? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I greet you all viewers especially the women, the women in business, the women who are there at home. Yes, women need to be economically empowered. And without money, you are like a soldier without a gun. How do you fight? And you find there are so many things a woman needs to run her life, to run her family. To me, I think women need more money than men. What? Yes. We have a lot of needs. We have a, a lot of needs. And that is why I encourage every woman from the grassroots level to the higher level that every woman should participate in, a, in an economic activity. Mm. Yes. And yes, because of this, I've always encouraged women, especially the young girls, mm. to make sure that they have something. Um, and My product of cooperatives. I have earned a lot in cooperatives. I've got trainings that has made Now, how easy has it been for you to bring other women into the cooperative movement? Because you, we agree, you've said that you encourage women to have something they are doing. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas or methodology you're giving them is joining cooperatives. Now, what has been your story? That is what I'm interested in, getting these people into this movement. Yes, of course it is not easy to mobilize women sometimes. Mm -hmm. We have so many issues. Our own issues, but Mobilizing women has not been all that easy. Associations, we teach them how to manage their lives, how to do business, how to be on their own, to be economically independent. You see that? Mm. Task, but we are moving there because of cooperatives, most of the women are now joining the groups mm -hmm. and they are benefiting, mm -hmm. yes. Now this takes me to Connie. Connie, uh, you're part of an association that uh, looks at women in business. Now uh, help our viewer understand how does, because business is broad, women entrepreneurs are uh, in all aspects. How does the cooperative uh, become an issue or that you feel through cooperatives, us in business, women in business, this is how best we realize our full potential? Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chirabo, for that question. You as my name is Connie Kachembo. He earlier didn't mention my name very well. Um, just following from what my colleagues and the environment they've given the women in this country 
to participate in economic activities. And this commitment, we are seeing it from what our first speaker just said, from what is in the policies, from what is in the constitution. But lately, from the commitment we see the government is putting the women who are doing business at the forefront, he, uh, she just talked about the GROW project. There are quite a number of initiatives that the government is trying to see that they uplift the, the plight of a woman who is participating in economic activities. And, and that's the way to go. So when my sister talked about the cooperative, and I want to bring it, to align it with what we call the women economic or the women entrepreneurship platforms. Mm. Now, we all need to... as women who are doing business, so that we are supported, so that we learn, so that we co-create, and we're able to accelerate our businesses. What Uganda Women Entrepreneurship is doing currently, mm. with support from the Ministry of Gender, Labor, and Social Development, and the World Bank, is to see that women are organized. Mm. To, dis uh, to address the issue you actually talked about earlier, that women businesses are dying. We don't want to see women businesses dying anymore. So the barriers that are creating that atmosphere, they have to be addressed now. Yeah. So we are intentional in ensuring that the women come together into uh, platforms, including the cooperative, it's a, it's a platform. Mm. So including the small groups out there, including the associations out there. The plan is to see that everyone is able to belong to a platform which is attracting women in business which is attracting entrepreneurs. And then collectively, we are able to mitigate the challenges that they are currently facing. And I Women not to do the right businesses or make enough income, um, like just our counterparts. One of them is uh, social norms mm. and gender-based violence. I know if we remain doing business alone without coming together, it's high time that we have that conversation. It is one of the barriers, definitely, yeah. that is not enabling us to have uh, good muscle to be able to put it up there. So with the support from the Ministry of Gender and World Bank, we see ourselves coming down to every community to talk about some of those challenges that are affecting the women. She correctly said that every woman needs money. And mm. at UWIL, we believe that a wealth woman, a wealth nation, we, we can't grow this nation mm -hmm. where we don't have resources. So we are intentional in ensuring that we provide that ambience, that capacity that the women require to do their business. So, but also most importantly, once we convene ourselves into women economic or women entrepreneurship platforms, we'll be able to have concrete conversations. Mm -hmm. And the other things that we think will help us is that we'll be able to skill each other, we'll learn from each other. Mm -hmm. My sister here, I've seen her with some products. We'll be able to know how she was able to get the products. So we now have to move away from slightly focusing on the cooperatives, but seeing the cooperatives are a uniting force as part of the platform that can enable us address some of those barriers. So we will be able to be skilled if we are together, be placed where the opportunities are that we can uh, learn more to, uh, from other successful entrepreneurs. So that when we come back, we're able to scale up our businesses. But besides that, there are critical things that we can't leave out, of course, access to finance. Mm. And we will not be able to be successful if we are staggered. Because we need to prepare the women, skill them, make sure they have an, an, uh, the capacity even to access the financing that this government has prepared for them. Quite a number of projects that are there, but the most recent one, as you know, is the GROW project. Yeah. And we want to see that the women are prepared within those cooperatives, within those associations, within those women yeah. entrepreneurship platforms, which we are coordinating, as you will. Yeah. And of course, I'm, I'm very excited to tell the country, the women out there, that you need to join these uh, we call them WEPs, the Women Entrepreneurship Platform, including the cooperatives, including the associations out there and the groups, mm. so that we are collectively being able to address the issues, bring them different players. Uh, for instance, Makere University Entrepreneurship 
once you're not in a, a woman entrepreneurship platform, you will miss. Mm. We are already uh, selecting common user facilities. These are areas uh, where we are finding in the community that have sort of excelled. Mm -hmm. They have some equipment, sort of industrial hubs of that nature, and the women can go and work together and go back home with the product. Mm. Again, this will also be easier if you're in a platform. Mm -hmm. And you are able to get information. The most important thing that the cooperatives and the associations and the women platforms you're setting up, which are actually these are government structures, mm. will provide instant information. You will be able to get to know at what point do I go here? How can I scale my services, my products? The team from government in URSB registration services will come through mm. the platforms to register you. So I am very excited that we talk about the cooperatives, which are directly aligned to mm. the mm. new mode of grow, mm. to see that we work within the platforms. We'll, we'll, you will find a menu mm. that you need you as an entrepreneur, a woman entrepreneur, to grow yourself. Mm -hmm. So I am, I'm, I'm happy to announce that if you're a woman out there doing business, you really must belong to mm. a a woman entrepreneur's platform, including the cooperatives. Mm -hmm. yes. So running alone uh, may not take you very far. If you want to run far, run with the rest. If you want a short distance, give it a try alone. But according to what I'm hearing from Connie, what I'm hearing from uh, Emanuela, and uh, of course uh, Justin, is you want to run long distances as a woman. And these platforms, the cooperatives, are one of the ways. Now, uh, Justin, this takes me to access to finance. Because uh, when you look at our setting, Connie uh, talked about cultural effects. Uh, women don't own property. So if you talk about banks, they don't have corato. Now, if you are to empower them economically, we must definitely, we must, that's why I told, talked about their business stagnating. She has customers she has, that can buy six, seven, eight sacks of charcoal and enlarge her business. But she's operating on four. Mama Naka, ya in, ya out. You found her there where rain is disturbing her when you are studying. You completed studies. Mama Naka is still earning that th small thing. When you ask, I can't get credit. Because how will I tell my husband, give me that land title? We take it, I access. Give me that vehicle, motorcycle card, if he's a border, border rider. Give me the vehicle. So how are cooperatives helping women to overcome this barrier? Mr. Chirabo, the cooperative model mm. brings together, first of all, a member. Like when we talk about the tripartite model of co in cooperatives, we have a member, an individual member, belonging to a cooperative. You're a member of a circle, for instance. Within the circle, there is the financial element of it because circle is dealing lending and borrowing. So, you c one can access money through that unit of the circle. You are a member of a given cooperative. There is a circle where you can borrow because, I, as I, I defined in the, in the beginning, like people come together with a common purpose, a common goal. And then at the end, in the tripartite mode, we also have the marketing element. Because we come together, not just to have another class of women formed, but with a purpose. And here we're talking about economic empowerment as our third pillar. So when we come together to, maybe we are into diary. Yes, we are members of that given cooperative, maybe Rukunjiri Diary Cooperative. And then within there, we have a circle, which is the financial arm we can borrow from. And after us processing, making our products, we also have the, the marketing, the unions to do the marketing. So a cooperative model is an integrated model where we are using our own resources. First of all, for us in cooperatives, we pull these resources, we come together, three of us pull the resources, but we are the same users of these resources. So the cooperative model, okay, first of all, that's one avenue in which we can access the, the finances and support each other. But now let's also try to get enlarge our basket. Let's get to the communities. In our communities, we have programs which are brought on board, like the parish development model. Mm -hmm. You know, these are cooperatives, yes, the, the PDMs, yes, all those are cooperatives. Mm -hmm. So government is also availing a resource. 
government is saying we are going to give this 100 million per parish. So let's, uh, we are encouraging women out there in our communities that also make use, make use of such products. Madam Connie has been explaining to us the product. That those are good. That's why as Uganda Cooperative Alliance, because our work is capacity building, resource mobilization. So when we see a good, that's why even before our annual general meeting, the board sat. And Madam Moroma said, well, what do we do? We need to have uh, topics on board. We need to bring on board persons, opportunities. And that's how for our annual general meeting, the board decided to bring on board the, the, the GROW project. And I uh, reached out to the Ministry of Gender. And then we had the GROW project to bring on board. And I'm so happy that even after that AGM, that there was an integration. They said, ah, now we're going to have a product for cooperatives. So we thank our board and, you know, the CEO for coming up with such initiative because we're supposed to lobby to look for, for, for at least for funding and resources for our cooperatives. So that is one way. But I also know, uh, okay, the spirit of cooperation should use our own resource. But where we can have friendly package, especially targeted, because I've also seen of late mama products, I mean banks are also offering products for cooperatives, eh? mm. especially at, at a fair rate. So for me, I would think that some of the ways we could tap into, first of all, our own resources, tap into the government platforms like the PDMs, you know, EMIOGA, those platforms. And then if there are those products which are friendly in banks and uh, tailored towards cooperatives and women empowerment, it would be a good initiative mm. uh, towards that. Uh, well, uh, that is uh, very clear. When you're in cooperatives, one thing I've liked, uh, Justin, that you've talked about mm. is you use your monies. Mm -hmm. So, sure, uh, Corato, mm -hmm. uh, land titles, mm -hmm. what if it's an agricultural produce? Well, we know your garden. Yes. That coffee, you bring it, we shall sell, so we are able to recover our money. Mm -hmm. So, that is the good thing, the goodness in the cooperative model. But also, the other idea that when the cooperators get to know some money somewhere, mm -hmm. they can organize themselves, get this money, it's a shared responsibility have it back so why not join mm -hmm. now one thing I know about women is they like listening to successful stories True. of their own and this inspire them now Emanuela uh, briefly I see you're now into production I beg you summarize uh, for a woman listening there how have you been able to make it to reach to levels where you into value addition of honey Oh, thank you so much. Uh, it has been a long journey, mm. but it's worth it. Okay. Um, I got trainings from Uganda Cooperative Alliance. Mm. That time I was just an ordinary member. Actually, from I'm, from, I'm a member of uh, mm. Navy Area Cooperative in bee products, uh, soya, maize, granites, something like that. But uh, I, picked, I picked the enterprise like for bee products because it was not tedious for me. Mm. And uh, I love doing it. I have a passion for it. And because of that, it has brought me where I am. I got a lot of opportunities through the government and I want to thank the government of Uganda for giving me opportunities. At one time in 2018, I chance to go to China for a training on bee production and uh, value addition. I kept on learning this and I practice. The problem is sometimes some of us are trained but you don't implement. Yes. You leave it at the training center or the training room. And how will it benefit you? When you are trained, come and participate, come and implement. Move forward. Don't allow people to continue pushing you. Mm. Push yourself because <coughs> at the end of the day, that money is yours. At the end of the day, your family matters. At the end of the day, your status as a woman matters. Mm. I told you, a woman without money is like a soldier without a gun. How do you fight? Unless you, you trained as a commando. You see that? Mm. So we all need money. And I came up with a lot of products. Mm -hmm. I am selling my products. Mm -hmm. 
I'm training the women how to do all this. Um, for example, as you can see this honey, mm. it's very good. Everybody likes honey. Well packaged. Well packaged. Mm. You earn money through this. Mm. Mm. We have the jellies, we have the lip balm, mm. we have the, the propolis. Mm. These are all products needed in the market. And if you are really serious as a woman, mm. you don't need much in this country. Peace is provided. What else do you want? How the government is supporting us. What mm -hmm. else do you want? Mm. You just need to work very hard, mm -hmm. be focused mm -hmm. and determined mm -hmm. to do something. And there you will have money. I love uh, Thank you. the passion you speak with. Uh, telling women you must work hard. Yes. Unfortunately, there is a generation that you are having these days where they feel it's better to be smart than to work hard. Uh, so when you're speaking to your daughters there, watching, some of them are wondering, are you going to be keeping? Mm -hmm. Are you going to hard work? Uh, yet, there are ways of making money quick and smart. But I think that is not for the corporators. The corporators mm. believe in hard work yes. and something that can sustain you. Mm -hmm. Here is your business, you grow it, you think of it, it takes you to greater heights than being on unreliable sources that can change any day, any minute, as long as they wish. Now this takes me uh, to Connie. We've looked at her story, she's told us a story and of course visibly we are seeing the products that she's been able to make. but. When you talk about cooperatives, first and foremost, uh, in your work time, how informed are women about cooperatives? Most of the times I go to women functions, I'm invited, and then ought to cover them. And a politician stands up and says, government has a lot of money for you. Now they're talking about the GLOW project. This money is there for you. Form circles, get this money. Now, when uh, Justin was defining a cooperative, it wasn't form a group to receive money. And I, and I know that the foundation of anything matters. Even if it's a house, I'm told even relationships, I don't know. But the foundation matters. So if they are formed on a wrong foundation, will they see success? What is the level of understanding and knowledge? Well, Chilabo, I must say, um, our relationship, first of all, with UWIL and the Cooperative Alliance mm -hmm. was on the ground that we had to initially organize our women mm -hmm. into cooperatives. Yes. And with their support, we were able to establish about 179 cooperatives. Mm. And they were based on enterprises. Mm. And uh, we have primary cooperatives in Shia, Bata, from the primary cooperatives, we formed the secondary cooperatives. We have very successful stories where we even went ahead through our bigger cooperative in Acholi and we set up a factory, a Shia butter factory. This is you will. But now we are given going further mm. beyond the cooperatives. We need to tap into the skills of the cooperators, the mm. skills of other associations. And I'm going to bring you back to why we think now Mm. We must have a common voice because they are, uh, I, I like what Justin said that we pull resources together. And even what we are setting up with support from GROW, mm. the Women Entrepreneurship Platform, is more or less the same. It is free. Mm. But the challenge has been that we have not been having a common space. Mm. We are in cooperatives, we are in PDM, we are in MIOGA, we have a very brilliant program for uh, the the, the entrepreneurship program under the ministry, but this is the time to convene ourselves and we consolidate. My sister here, I, I like the experience she's gone through. Mm. We have been impacting women with the various skills, as you will, for the last 37 years. Mm. Some practice, some don't practice. And what we want now is to see where is the gap why is it that we're not practicing? And I will tell you, she's gone to China, she's gone everywhere, she has got the skills. She doesn't have equipment. Mm. 
Mm. Where she can do the honey, you cannot just collect the honey and over it is in the minute you have it in that bottle. Mm. It means there's something you require. Mm. To add value addition, most of our members are in agribusiness. For the women in agribusiness to be supported, removing the man aside, the certain things they must have, like equipment. Mm. And again, under the GROW project, there will be a grant that will facilitate women who are working together. Mm either in a cooperative, which we are calling a web, mm. to see that they can access that equipment that can enable them to have value addition. Practice the skills. By the beginning point, we want to skill them. But you must be part of the web. You must be part of the women entrepreneurship platform so that we skill you better. We give you all that you require. She has the product. Mm. I guess now she needs more capacity in marketing mm. so that this product is everywhere. When you talk about honey, what should come in our mind should be our local honey. Mm. You get it? So this is the intentional approach that the GROW project has brought on board mm. that let's break the gap. Where is it? There is no equipment. Okay, you may have an equipment. You have a space. Mm. So again, the common user facilities come in where the women will be coming together. Mm -hmm. But along the process, as part of the mandate that we are doing, as you will, through the Ministry of Gender, is to see we have mentors. Her mm. story... She acts a very good, strong mentor for us to see that we are able to change the mindset of the young girls, especially, and women. And with GROW, they are also looking at someone who has started. Mm. You have a, a little bit of a skill. You already have a business, but you're stagnated like you've been using that word, which really is what we want to break. How do we make sure this person moves from where she is to the next level in the next five years? We want to see that tremendous change. But it can only happen if we are doing work collectively. If we have spaces where we can be coached easily, mentored. And you, at the start, you asked about issues of access to finance. And again, I want to repeat to the audience that you can receive finance now and you don't see what it has done unless you're advocating for or the women platform advocating for, you need preparation. So I want to urge the women out there who are listening to us, that when you're called upon, please join associations. It could be the nearest cooperative in your area because we need it. And let's get to know that you belong there so that we prepare you to access finance. It's very important. All this money has been coming, and I really want to appreciate our government and our president of Uganda, that there is intentional to supporting women, to lift us. But we have never done what she has said. They train you, and it stops on paper. We want to see, can, now, can, can we now practice? Can we go beyond uh, access to finance? When we access financing, it's now meaningful. And we can see more products, we can see more meaningful businesses that are run by women. And because in history, it is world over. Even in Uganda, we are the leading entrepreneurs. <laughs> we have that space. <laughs> and we want to claim it even better mm. by performing very well. Mm -hmm. And access to finance is just a boost. But we need all this. What Justin just said, you know, you don't just, even if you access money from anywhere, Mm. But you have to have a team that understands what they're doing, that appreciates to work with others. That is very important. It is among the principles of being cooperative or being a cooperator. And I, and I want us to emphasize that all those nice things that have been in place, we need, this is the time now. If the, you're out there, you're a woman, embrace the government programs. And one of it is to see that you belong to a women entrepreneurship platform or a cooperative which is still the same, but we have to now come together. Mm -hmm. I love uh, the continuous echoing of coming together as women because, and also the one area Connie you've pointed out is, it's not a matter of just getting money because government of Uganda has come up with several programs I, since, since I was seven years. I've been hearing money, money, and antiqua scheme. Uh, we can mention a number of them. But you see, the output is not in tandem with the money. And uh, I think this has been the challenge, that we think with money, we've solved a problem. But people are not empowered. They're not given the knowledge. 
that Emanuela got. And one of the avenues you can get this knowledge is through being a member of a cooperative. Because then, the likes of Connie will come your way, the likes of Justin will come your way, other stakeholders that matter in empowering these, you as a woman with the information you need, will come your way. And when you have the information, you have the finances, Connie also mentioned the element of marketing, there's that collective marketing, because cooperatives offer us that opportunity, collective marketing. Mm -hmm. That's why you see Banyankole Kweterana, in Chiving, everyone is growing their coffee, but we bring it together and hit good markets. Then everyone gets their share and life continues. A woman without unless you're a commando, the way you fight your battle will be really very hard. And I love unless you're a commando. <laughs> a very empowerment of, of women in this country. Now, this brings me back to Justin. Uh, we know, and research has shown, mm -hmm. that women are very good in handling finances. Uh, I don't know, maybe it is in their DNA, or because they, they don't have those many responsibilities mm -hmm. that a man may have. Because uh, if there is a man in the house, there are those really automatic, unless he's not a man, that he has to do. And the woman can save the little. And the temptations are little also to tamper with what she has. But also financial literacy mm -hmm. is still a very big challenge amongst them. Mm -hmm. You find, yes, you will have that money, not invest. Save, save, save. Then you ask, supposing we lose someone and they tell me I have to go to the village and bury you. This. So how do we use cooperatives to promote financial uh, knowledge about handling finances, planning better? It's no good. Uncertainty happening. And you'll be shocked. During COVID-19, women had money. Many homes were fed by women. And husbands were wondering, where are you getting the money from? No wonder there was a case of a prominent lady where during COVID-19, the husband was home, but they were eating matoke, chicken, very well, until one time the woman discovered, this man who is not working, yet we are feeding very well. Where is he getting the money? We need to check her box. It had been broken, it was the money feeding them. So the man said, but why suffer when you have money, yet have So keeping such money purposelessly, let's look at that. Yes, Mr. Chirabo, um, financial literacy indeed is, is core. As Uganda Cooperative Alliance, one of our key mandates is capacity building. We have moved around the country in the different regions and moving around, we're uh, going to meet in cooperators. Where we go, one of our key roles is capacity building. And I have seen our board design the areas of focus. I've seen cap I mean, uh, financial literacy as one of them, auditing, you know, promoting good governance. So, one way in which we can promote financial as, as Uganda Cooperative Alliance is that we do the community sensitizations. We move mm -hmm. out to the communities on capacity building different topics, of course, focusing on financial literacy, good governance in cooperatives. But also, we bring, uh, of course, on board different stakeholders. I love it. Madam Connor has brought it out well, mm -hmm. that whether it's the village savings uh, groups, whether cooperatives, but we need to be united as women. They could be doing, they could be better even at capacity building. We can engage them to come on board and meet our women in the different cooperatives or the cooperators elsewhere, and they do the capacity building. So as Uganda Cooperative Alliance, we do it, but we also do the partnership. Uh, personally, I'm in charge of partnership. So we also reach out to partners to help empower, build the capacities of the cooperatives in the diff different areas. Um, Mr. Chirab, we talked about women having that talent or being gifted at finances. This even traces back even to the Bible. When you read Proverbs 31, they talk about the virtuous woman, 31, I think we should start from 10 to 25. They say, this woman, they, they get out to the field, they are vending for their family, 
they even save to even buy more land. Uh, mm -hmm. People who read the Bible, Proverbs 31, from 10, I think 10 to 25, it describes who a virtuous woman is. And that's why we are coming here. We are encouraging women out there. That it has not begun with our generation as women of today. But even long time, in the time of Jesus, the time of creation, we saw women work together. I read about powerful women in the Bible. That time people would bake, they would do the weaving. Mm -hmm. But now we have seen cooperatives grow. We have different categories of cooperatives. We have cooperatives in mining, cooperatives in agriculture, which are the traditional ones. We have workplace cooperatives. Mm -hmm. So we are encouraging NRJ women out there to tap into these cooperatives and the women associations. As long as you have that common enterprise, mm -hmm. please let's come together. One of the roles of cooperatives, uh, one of the principles is, principle number five is education, training, and uh, <coughs> capacity building. So. We want uh, cooperatives out there. We are calling, by the way, we are calling upon the cooperators out there that even in the Cooperative Act, there is money which is supposed to be put aside for cooperative education. And, eh? mm. So we are encouraging us to promote that in our different cooperatives. Let's enlighten our members. Let's reach out to them and build their capacities eh? basing on that principle of education, information, and training. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, my time seems to be running out, but I'll be giving each of my guests uh, to have their parting shots and uh, of course more on uh, women how to make sense of these cooperatives. Very many women groups mm -hmm. that have been saving and guess what? Mm -hmm. On the 22nd mm -hmm. oh. they are going to meet, mm -hmm. bring out what they have been saving, have a, a party. get that money to eat, to spend, to, dre to dress well during Christmas. Uh, Emanuela, your parting shot. Well, thank you so much once again. Yeah, this is a terrible season right now for women, I mm. must admit. Um, some women associations have been saving for the Christmas season. Mm. They have bought cows. Mm. Just imagine 12 people mm. buying two cows mm. to slaughter during Christmas Just. and to eat all the meat. Mm. During enough meat like that, won't you fall sick? Mm. You only need maybe two kilos of meat. Mm. The rest sell so that you can continue. And this is a mega birthday, the birth of yes. Jesus. No, you don't need much mm. because uh, January is coming, school yes. fees is there, this and that. You don't need to waste money during Then you the run season. to the cooperative to, bor to borrow. No, but how can you continuously borrow for your life? Mm -hmm. You need to save, have a saving culture. Mm -hmm. Know how to spend, know how to, how to economize mm -hmm. whatever resources you have. Mm -hmm. So that you can push into the new year mm -hmm. with the different activities mindset to progress mm -hmm. uh, you see mr chirabo what is happening is that m women tend to waste a lot of food also mm. they cook more than they can eat mm. why waste a lot of food and this is not good for our men some of the men are suffering out there, bringing food here, but this is a woman who is wasting food, not knowing that her children are supposed to go to school, her children are supposed to dress, herself she's supposed to dress, she's supposed to do a lot of things. Now it's high time women thinking of something to do for their lives and to be focused on what they want in life. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Madam Emanuela. Thank in a minute, please, Connie, as we move out. Um, I just, first of all, uh, once again, I want to appreciate our government, mm. our president, for ensuring that he continues to bring in programs that can support the women of this country. And in particular, the most recent, the GROW project, mm. that is trying to address all the common barriers that affect a woman to run their businesses. As you will, we are proud to be part of the implementing team with the, the support given to us from the Ministry of Gender. We want to request women to try and join 
the various associations you can get hold of, including the cooperatives. Because when you're in a cooperative, we'll be able to access you and train you and recommend you for a placement. You'll have an opportunity to get information about women entrepreneurship. You'll have an opportunity to get information about grow in time. You also have access to financing that you talked about, which is in first opportunity we've had in this country and we want to thank the Cooperative Alliance for ensuring that we are out there to educate the masses and not forgetting that we have a weak circle, a, corporate, uh, a circle for women entrepreneurs that was set up by the Cooperative Alliance. Uh, for us is a maxstone. We are 600 women serving together oh. and we can now access about 40 million at oh. once if you want financing. The circle is open for of saving has to be embraced by women themselves when we have something of our own. Well, thank, thank you so much, uh, Connie, uh, Justin, uh, as we get out of the studios this morning. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, our viewers. I'm grateful to UBC for availing us the platforms to reach out to the cooperators and especially today to the women. I leave them with that Proverbs 31. out there. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, ladies. Uh, Connie, Emanuela, and Justin. It's all been about economic empowerment of women through cooperatives. That's the only vehicle where you'll access the financing, you access the information you need, the skills you need as a business. See you tomorrow. God willing, have a blessed day. In a nation hungry for truth, a world where every story matters, there exists a beacon of trust and reliability. For decades, they've been our voice and our window to the world.